Canusa inner and outer sleeves are shipped pre-cut with a pre-attached closure. The adhesive is protected from contamination by an inner liner. A detailed product installation guide identifies the important steps to properly install a heat shrinkable sleeve and is shipped with each box of sleeves. These installation instructions are intended as a guide for standard products, so consult your Canusa representative for specific projects or unique applications. Canusa CPS recommends the use of heat shrinkable sleeves for both the inner protection over steel and for the outer protection over the polyurethane foam. For operating temperatures up to 95 degrees Celsius, use the appropriate diameter 300 mm wide Canusa INR95 as the inner protection. The outer sleeve is a 600 mm wide Canusa K60. A heat shrinkable sleeve is made of cross-linked and stretched polyethylene backing coated with a heat activated adhesive. The sleeve is pre-cut to fit the specific pipe diameter and has a pre-attached closure strip. Always follow the storage and safety guidelines when using the products. This will ensure that the products will be in their best condition when applied. Using the proper equipment is important. Torches, clean knives and rollers that are in good condition plus calibrated temperature measuring instruments all make installation of sleeves easy, fast, and done right. Canusa recommends a short-handled short tip with a maximum 400,000 BTU torch size. Contact your Canusa representative for your nearest approved torch dealer. Using a power wire brush, clean the steel and corrosion coating to a minimum of SIS ST2 or equivalent surface cleanliness standard to remove mill scale and surface rust. Clean the abraded surface with a clean cloth to remove dust, dirt, and debris. Use a propane torch to heat the ceiling area to a minimum temperature of 10 degrees Celsius above the dew point temperature. Using a temperature measuring device, ensure that the correct temperature is reached on the steel. Direct the flame towards the center of the cutback to prevent damage to the insulation. Partially remove the release liner and gently heat the underlap at the edge. Center the sleeve on the pipe, ensuring that it equally overlaps onto each edge of the factory coating. Remove the remaining release liner while wrapping the sleeve loosely around the pipe. Gently heat the top of the underlap, the adhesive side of the overlap, and the green side of the closure until it becomes glossy. Press the overlap and closure firmly into place. Gently heat the top of the closure and pat it down with a gloved hand. Repeating this procedure, move from one side to the other and smooth any wrinkles out by gently working them outward from the center of the closure with a roller. Using the appropriate torch, begin at the center of the sleeve and heat circumferentially around the pipe. Use broad strokes and continue heating from the center toward one end of the sleeve until recovery is complete. In a similar manner, heat and shrink the remaining side. Shrinking is complete when the adhesive begins to ooze out the edges and the sleeve is in full contact with the pipe. While the pipe is still hot and soft, use a hand roller to gently roll the sleeve surface and push any trapped air up and out of the sleeve. If necessary, reheat to roll out air. Install the polyurethane foam as per the manufacturer's instructions. Use a propane torch with a low flame to dry the jacket pipe and service pipe. Use a dry grease and lint-free rag to wipe clean the jacket pipe and service pipe. Using a scraper, remove any burrs from the edges of the jacket pipe. Clean 150 millimeters of the jacket pipe surface on each side of the cutback with an approved solvent. 
using grit paper, roughen 150 millimeters of the jacket pipe surface and all of the polyurethane foam. Using a dry rag, which is free of lint and grease, clean the roughened surface to remove any loose particles. Using a propane torch, warm 150 millimeters of the jacket pipe surface to 65 degrees Celsius, but do not apply heat to the polyurethane foam. Partially remove the release liner and gently heat the underlap approximately 150 millimeters from the edge. Center the sleeve over the foam, ensuring equal overlap onto the jacket and press the underlap firmly into place. Wrap the sleeve loosely around the pipe, ensuring the appropriate overlap. Remove any remaining release liner and gently heat the backing of the underlap and the adhesive side of the overlap. Be careful not to damage the polyurethane foam insulation during heating. Gently heat the closure and pat it down with a gloved hand. Repeating this procedure, move from one side to the other. Smooth out any wrinkles by gently working them outward from the center of the closure with a roller. Using the appropriate torch, begin at the center of the sleeve and heat circumferentially around the pipe. Use broad strokes and continue heating from the center toward one end of the sleeve until recovery is complete. Continue heating from the center toward the remaining side. Shrinking has been completed when the adhesive begins to ooze out the edges and the sleeve is in full contact with the pipe. While the sleeve is still hot and soft, use a roller to roll the sleeve surface and push any trapped air up and out of the sleeve. Visually inspect the installed sleeve and make sure that the sleeve is in full contact with the steel joint that the adhesive flowed beyond both sleeve edges and that no cracks or holes are in the sleeve backing. After shrinking is complete, allow the sleeve to cool prior to lowering and backfilling. To prevent damage to the sleeve, use selected backfill material or a suitable shield for protection.